we've started. Okay, so this will be part two of module four, ostensibly to go over the last three choices you have in the tool you can use. Let me stress that you are using just one of these tools. You're not having to use all of these tools. Um, tonight, I kind of wanted to uh, highlight the use of one of the tools because it is a uh, tool that you would use in a Chrome book. Uh, it's called Toontastic. I just wanted to take the time to kind of share with you um, what it looks like. Uh, it's readily available. It's, it's free. Um, it can be put on any Chromebook. It's a um, it's an in the Play Store, and it's very simple to have installed. Now, I can't speak for every school district, um, but I know that uh, schools have someone in their buildings that are, uh, if their school is using the Google Classroom, they have someone in the building, Google Administrator, that can reach out to the top administrator to get uh, permissions to have this thing put on. But it's, like I said, it's just one of three that we're going to go over tonight. But I wanted to take a step back and make sure we're all on board with Dr. Mayer. And I did this last week. The thing you have to understand about Mayer is this is not a all or nothing. Uh, it is a guide. And so it's not like that everything we do, we have to hit all 12 of these. It's more along the lines of when you do something. If you include the things that are in here, this is what Mayor would like to see you do. And as I said, Mayor is not an educator. Mayor is a researcher, and he's looking at the way people learn, and hence his dual channel uh, model that he's come up with. So let's just make sure. So if we look up here under coherence principle, this is the one about don't let extraneous things get in the way so that people are sitting there looking at your content and going, what is that in the upper left-hand corner? Now this can be, you know, some, some folks can, can argue that like some of these uh, um, apps that we've been working with, some of them do sound. Some of them you can actually record your voice. Some of them have uh, soundtracks. And it seems like we're at odds here <coughs> with the storytelling rubric that we have been looking at because it talks about things like how soundtracks help um, set a tone. And we know that for a fact. You know, we, we think of our favorite movie and the, one of the first things that pops into our head is the soundtrack that goes with that movie. I think what we're what Mayor's trying to get at here is he doesn't he doesn't argue against that. What he argues is if it is something that is out of place. So in other words, if you have a a scene of daisies and puppies, but yet you have this very uh, ominous music playing in the background and nothing ominous happens, that's a coherence principle violation. Signaling we get. We're teaching. We understand what that is. Now you get down here to where it says redundancy. People learn better graphics and narration than from graphics, narration, and on-screen text. Correct. This means this is a violation of his dual channel theory. In other words, when you are receiving information through your eyes and through your ear, if you double up that information that is coming in from one or the other or both of those channels, then it goes, it gets confused and it goes into your short term memory where it tries to organize it, tries to make sense of it, tries to look for prior information about it. It does not mean necessarily that it should be graphics and narration. What it means is, if you're going to have graphics and on-screen text, don't throw narration in. If you're going to have narration in graphics, don't throw in on-screen text unless you use it for signaling. Spatial, temporal, you know, I, I don't get 
too worked up over those because I think they're so obvious it's not even funny. The segmenting, again, as teachers, we get segmenting. We break things into small chunks. Um, if you think about it, one of the things that we're playing with tonight, the segmenting principle could come into play, uh, especially as we're looking at these um, comics that we're going to be creating. Segmenting could be when you look at one screen, you move to another screen, they're talking about two different things. So, and we would make sure under the signaling principle that we understand that. So let's talk about this. Here's the setup. And now let's look at this. Here's the setup and here's the thing. So signaling and segmenting to me, they go together hand in glove. The modality principle. I'm sorry, let's do pre-training first. People learn better from a multimedia lesson when they know the, the names and characteristics of the main concepts. I think that's one's rather obvious. And so you might have a, you might have a slide that just is uh, full of the kinds of words and, and imagery that people need to know, or it might be just a rehash of the concepts. You don't go into something cold. Now modality. People learn better from graphics and narration than from animation and on-screen text. This one is, again, I think problematic, but Mayer's got the, he's got the research to back it up. But when I look at this, I think to myself, how many of us have the wherewithal and the ability to do the kind of animation and um, narration that he wants us to think is having a much better job of, of helping us understand. I get what he's saying there. If you think about animation and on-screen text, your on-screen text has to be very precise as to how it fits with the animation. I also think, going back to the segmenting principle, that when you're talking about something that the pieces that are going to be described, when you think about um, Mayer's example of the, the brakes, um, so you would have a caliper and you would have the disc and you would have a rotor, you know, each one of these kind of like what I did last week in the Biteable where I start putting the parts out there about what makes an airplane fly. Um, when you look at those, then yes, you're using text on the screen, but you're doing it in a way that it's very clear that the text and whatever the picture is, spatial contiguity, that they fit. And then the segmenting is each one of those builds upon the other to where you come back to the full idea about the parts of an airplane that help it fly. Personalization principle, your voice is much better than a recorded voice. Um, there's only two places, two apps that we'll be looking at in this module that were really that, well, actually three. Um, where that really comes to play. And that is, as I have said in part one, you are free to use Animoto for this module if you want to. Just to make sure you use the Animoto ability to record your voice. Um, the other two that, can, that you can record your voice are the Beyond and tonight when we look at Toontastic. Um, all the others rely upon text and animation or text and as we look at these two comic strip uh, creation pieces they look at text and pictures and let's see and the last two um your friendly human voice and having your picture doesn't really matter <laughs> pretty straightforward stuff if you ask me all right so let's go back and jump in to the apps that we're looking at tonight. So I'm going to start off with this thing called Make Beliefs Comics. Makes Believe Comics is a part of the, um, we looked at last week the, uh, the little movie making 
app called Zimmer Twins. Make Believe Comics comes from the same guy who created Zimmer Twins. His last name is Zimmer. And it is a very simple, easy to use comic strip maker. The nice thing about it is it is free. I say Zimmer, I meant Zimmerman. It is free. And so you can just you land right on the page and you can do everything you want to do. Now, one of the things you have to be aware of is that when you're working with it, it's not you're not going to get anything fancy out of it. In other words, you're you're not going to be able to put it into a um, in, embeddable code. You're going to have to just save down the comic that you make and then uh, save it as a you know graphic file, a JPEG file, and then pull it in to um, your wherever you're going to put it, whether that be in your Google Classroom or whether that be in, for our purposes, putting it into the wiki page that you have created. So let's take a look here at how it kind of works. Down here below, it has all these different categories of things that you can use uh, to make things. You can use starters, and by starters, what it means, it will give you a template. We're kind of used to this, aren't we? We know how this works. And so if I grab this, and that'll be my starter. And I can come down here, and I can decide how I want to start. In other words, which one of these do I want to use as my way of starting? So if I click on her, there's my first panel. And if I click on it, I can now go in and I can start writing in here. Simple, simple as that. And over here, I can, as you can see, is I, there's a little plus sign next to the one, so I can just start adding comics or panels as I go across. Make sure, again, that I will put my name up here. And over here, Again, I'll put my name. You don't have to do your name there again, but it helps. Okay. And so now all I have to do is I click on the plus sign. I come down here. And then one of the things that makes it really nice is it does have an awful lot of pictures and various... Um, characters to choose from and you just basically move across the page here and look at all the different people that you have to select from now a lot there's a lot of them in here so you do have to spend a little bit of time looking around for things and i'll be honest there we are that's what i was looking for so I'm going to put in Mr. Lincoln. And as you can see, I have a couple of choices I want to use here. Actually, I have four. So I can put a Mr. Lincoln in. Now I can move him around. And I can do different things with him. I can make him bigger. I can make him smaller. Um, to do that, I click here. Um, I can flip him, so on. I can delete him if I want to. <coughs> excuse me so when I go back as you can see I come back to where I can put uh, speech bubbles in and I can drag that up
and now I have a place where he can start he can start talking and I'm not going to keep going too much farther with this because I think you get what I'm trying to do all right now when you look at um, your panels across the top here again to add another cartoon or another panel to your cartoon then you come down here and you can click on back and you can put in just about anything you want that is in here okay so you have to pay attention to your choices that you have here and like I said, with your characters, you have to kind of, you have to kind of look around in there to find the character. They give you these uh, talk and talk back things, which I guess are okay. I mean, it's kind of a it works your way through it. Let's go ahead. Let me just throw it to you. So you go in here and you say who you're going to pick. So um, I'll pick this one. And I'll pick this one. And I'm going to put them in. And I'm going to I'm going to flip him. And then I'm going to move him. Whoops. Come on, buddy. Flip. Okay. Then I'm going to move him. I'm going to put here. And I'm going to put that guy there. Okay, and I think you see where I'm going with this. Now I can come back here, and I can find the talk bubbles to have him talking of his head, and a talk bubble to have him talking above his head. Or he could be thinking. Okay. Now, once you've created it, you're going to go up here to the top. And you're going to make sure that you save it. And you do that by putting a name on it and making sure that you have saved your incredible comic. If you don't put your name on it, it doesn't get uh, saved. Now I'm going to come down here to print an email. And I'm not going to worry about sign in to save online because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to save my image to a disk. And since I'm on my Chromebook here, I'm basically going to say I'm going to save it into my downloads. And I'm going to save. Simple as that. Now let me go on to the next one and then we'll come back and we'll talk about how we can uh, put them into our PB works because it's it's easy peasy. So that was um, make beliefs comics, probably the easiest thing that we have. Let's look at storyboard that. Now, unlike make beliefs comics with storyboard that, you have to have an account I and mean, you can have a free account. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, it's very similar to um, Make Believe Comics in the fact that it does the same kind of thing. It just has a lot more backgrounds and a lot more uh, structure that structures that you can put into it. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to log in. And I'm going to log in with my Googly because that's what I used. Okay. 
And then the first thing it wants you to do is it wants you to, um, you know, up your join a, a cost. So here we are. So as you can see, it starts me off with uh, three blanks, just like the other one. Now, of course, the question is going to be asked is, so how many panels do we have to have, Steve? How many panels does it take to explain whatever your point is? So like the one where I was working on the three levels of government, let's see, that'd be a panel that says, what are the three levels of government? A panel that would explain what each one of those three levels of government is, and then a final panel that basically says, now that you understand the three levels of government, you know, you're a better citizen for that or whatever. So let's see, that's one, one, two, three, four, five. So same thing here. And as I said, as you can see, this has a lot more stuff. Um, and look, it even has categories. So see, <laughs> it becomes really easy to do things um, inside of this particular one than it did with um, Make Believe Comics. So in this one, if we wanted to follow along with the same idea, I could scroll across here and I can see where I have a um, jury, a courtroom. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. I saw one back there that looked like it could be a legislative body. Here's one about voting. There's the White House. There's the Capitol. You get it. Um, there's the uh, House of Representatives. So we could, you know, start by putting a picture in our first. And this is a voting place. And so I can go up here and I can find a character. And this is a character that I could use throughout or I could switch up my characters by just coming up here and grabbing one. And just like in the Beyond, where we talked about when you put a character in, you want to make them bigger because that emphasizes the fact that they're the important person in the shot. Okay. Um, and I put them in this voting place and I could change my mind and I could go back and I could say, well, maybe what I ought to have done is to put them in front of something that is much more, um, if I'm talking to kids about what does it take to be a citizen, maybe I should have put them in front of, well, here you go. Okay. And what I wanted you to see was how easy it is to flip it out. Okay. Now I can come in and I can use my textables, a bin, which is nothing more than a way of being able to put text on the screen. And I drop that down and I can make it big. I can make it small. You know, I can do anything I want to with my little textable that I have on the screen. Over here, it's basically giving me colors and sizes of text and, and all that, and that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this over just a little bit. Then I'm gonna slide in and I'm gonna start writing. Okay. And then I'll come back up here and I'll look at my scenes. Well, okay. Well, let's look at all the different choices here. Yeah. So you've got your actions uh, that you could put in here, which is really kind of neat. It really does a nice job with that. But getting back to scenes. So now I can again find another scene. And I could probably pull in that voting thing again if I wanted to. Or I could put in, let's see, there's one back here about serving on a jury. You know, you get the idea, I hope. Okay. I 
I got Dana Powell. And I can drag in my character again, or I could highlight her and do a control C and a control V and, and put her into the same shot either way. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Now, when you get finished with this, one of the things you must do So I'm going to go save. As you can see, it says I only get two storyboards. So I'm, I'm already out of storyboards. So I'm going to go ahead and call this citizen. And I'm going to save my storyboard. Now, here's what's different. On this particular one, I have the ability to use an embed code. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll go ahead and show you how to do this one real fast, just so we can remember. So I'm going to copy the embed code. I'm going to close it. I'm going to come over here and I'll go to my mayor thing because I don't need it now. And let's go ahead and get to our PB works. And I'm going to log in. And I'm going to use my. And I'm going to look at my pages and files. And I'm looking for my page that I created called Module 4 Storytelling. Okay. So there's my biteable that I created. Again, uh, you don't have to do all of them. I'm just showing you what's possible. And now if I want to put in my storyboard that using my code, my embeddable code, I come down to HTML JavaScript. I now paste that code in there. Make sure you check that. Then I'll go next. And then I'll insert the plugin. And now when I save it, it shows my comic that I have created. Now, if I'd use the Make Beliefs comics, it's even easier. I come over here and I do Images and Files. And I'm going to upload a file. And I'm going to go and find it in my downloads, because that's where I saved it to, remember? And it's called Make Beliefs Comics. I'm going to open that. And that brings it in. And I click on it, and it puts the comic straight into my page. Storyboard that Let's go look at the last one. And this one is this one's interesting. So I'm gonna take you through it and I'm gonna want you to think about it now. Um, you may not be able to tell I'm on a Chromebook right now. If I were to move all this out of the way, you would just go, oh, yeah, he's on a Chromebook. Well, you just saw me go into the file structure. So here's Toontastic. It's down here in my tray, just like it would be in a dock or in your system tray. And there's no way you can turn that off. 